This island is not only about food, but Penang is one of the most famous spots in Malaysia with plenty of other good reasons as well. In this episode of our travel guide series, you will explore with us as we narrow down some of the things to do, especially when you're a first timer traveling to Penang, Malaysia. If you are planning to visit the island, we hope this video will help you along the way in planning your itinerary. We're actually gonna go out and explore today for the first time in Penang since we got here. It's been kind of crappy weather, basically. Uh, it's been raining like every day, on and off. Ty, you lose everything. I lost my shoe. What time is it right now, Jim? It's about 10 o'clock. This is UNESCO World Heritage. Yeah. It's a waterfront property, so it's residential. So it's not open like super late at night to the public. These are all residential houses and stuff, but it's all on the waterfront. So it's a great place to eat, great place to find souvenirs and stuff and shop. But it's like a really old Chinese settlement here in Penang Island. Let's start off with Penang Heritage Trail, Clan Jetties. These water villages are over centuries old, along with their wooden piers and villages on stilts that are home to descendants of Chinese immigrants. There are eight different clans that still reside here, with each individual jetty named after their family name. For example, some of the most visited ones are Tan Jetty, belongs to the Tan family, and Chu Jetty, which belongs to the Chu family. Today, these houses remain home to a number of families, and they don't have to pay any taxes because they're not on land. So this one is right at the Klang Street, as you can see. I think Lebu mean, means street. There's so much building here in this area, but it's quite different. And then I come to find out that it's the building in the pre-war period of Penang. This is a small no-through road in Georgetown, Penang. The whole street is lined with pre-war townhouses in which many of them have never been reconstructed. I feel like a lot of the town here definitely in Penang has that old vibe where like they keep their main culture and their main building style and everything very strong. Sunday, today, actually they have pop-up market here. It used to be the bus terminal at this place, surprisingly. And then it just turned out to be a whole bunch area like, of the artworks like and everything. Park. They have like a skate park here. They have a bunch of different stuff here. So like little shops, concession stands. It's really cool to see how they've trained or turned this parking garage, this bus terminal, into something so useful that people like really want to go to. Something like so recreational, yeah. I would say, because like surrounding here is right in Georgetown where you can see the like, big buildings. But to be honest, like one of the best parts I think about being here is that even though it is so hot here in Penang, uh, this is covered by all trees, so you can actually walk around and enjoy yourself without dying of heat. We are at Ferengi Night Market. I, I think that's how you say it. Yeah, I think so. But we're here early, so the market doesn't open until 6.30. It's about 6, and uh, we're gonna walk the beach. We have about an hour and a half. We have about an hour and a half until sunset, so we're gonna catch sunset. That one looks so lovely. Hello. No, it's fine. This beach is located along the northern coast of Penang Island and is only about 11 kilometers northwest of the city center. It's a prime beach destination in Penang among the locals and the tourists. It also offers various water sport activities such as parasailing. Actually, it once used to be a really quiet village till urbanization of the area began around 1970. Storm coming in though, it has cooled down a lot, which makes it really nice to just relax, walk the beach, and enjoy, you know, the cool breeze and the smell of the ocean water and everything. It's really nice. They have a lot of activities at this beach. This place is so cool. It's cool, but you know what? What? If you happen to have a big garden at home, just light everything up at night and you can probably feel the same. <laughs> You know, one thing that is really impressive is that I don't feel any mosquito bites at That's all. That's great. 
and we're right by the water like we are right on the on the ocean the birds are like woof, 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 woof. i look up the tree and because i hear the sound like shoo, 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 in the tree so i look up and then wow it's a real bird so it's not fake so there's supposed to be a five dollar or a five rupee parking fee and ring one it. five ringgit parking fee and a one ringgit entry ticket but um, nobody has stopped us. There's no place, there's no counter, there's nothing. It's just like a really local garden to walk up the steps and see the beautiful colored lights and everything. It's a nice place for couple. I see so many couple here. Good morning from Jelutung Market. Jelutung. Jelutung. Yeah, so right now it's 9 a.m. in the morning. Jilutong Market is the largest, most chaotic, and oldest market on Penang. Every morning and evening, the bustling outdoor market shuts down a major throughway to spread vegetables, fruits, and traditional street foods. We are going to Kapitam. So Kapitam is basically, from what we talked to our friend last night, she said that it's kind of like a, a famous breakfast place, some sort. Kapitam, originally a traditional coffee shop, but nowadays you can also get a variety of food. However, not all kinds of food because food in Kapitam is usually exclusively Malaysian Chinese cuisine. It's a go-to place to get your daily meals, either breakfast or lunch, especially breakfast. You'll find the elders, like uncles, they love gathering here in Kapitam and they have conversations over coffee. So this morning, we're actually gonna start a little bit later than normal. Uh, it's about 12 o'clock, and we're actually in Little India. So we're gonna tour Little India. First impression, loud Indian music. It reminds me of the Indian wedding that we went to, because all the music is so like distinct. Ex exactly. Uh, the land was allotted to the Indians. And then over time, the Chinese immigrants grew in population so much that basically it like cocooned the Indian town, India town, into the center of the city. So that's why you kind of have like the Chinese immigrants all around and then you have uh, this little section of little India. But oh. this, this was actually allotted to the Indian. Julia Street is one of the oldest roads in the city of Georgetown. It is also well known as food paradise within Penang due to the numerous hawker stalls and restaurants along the street that serve local cuisines. Most stalls started selling food here around 6 p.m. and close up shop by midnight. The market seems to be the busiest around 8 p.m. though. It's tourist friendly and each stall clearly listed what they're selling and the prices. We really enjoyed this as it made ordering as a tourist much easier. Some of the foods that we love is lokbo. This dish is where skewers of meat and vegetable are cooked by dipping them into a shared bowl of boiling water or broth. Another thing not to miss is wonton mee or wonton with egg noodles. Not only food, but Chulia Street is well known for several bars for tourists as well. Would be a great place like if you're you know, in Georgetown and you want to go for a run in peace and quiet, like this would be a great place. Just enjoy the peace and quiet. Like, this opens at 5 a.m. Just happened to find the weirdest tree ever. That's I haven't seen this anywhere know. before. Have you seen this anywhere before, Tim? No. This garden is pretty huge and they don't allow any vehicles, like motor vehicles. They just use the electric motorbike. There's monkeys right there. Where? Here they come, my family. Come here, brother. You already got an eye for it. Come here, brother. Where? Oh, I saw it. This is the largest Buddhist temple in Malaysia, located at the top of Air Itam Hill, near Penang Hill. This temple is an important pilgrim center for Buddhists from Hong Kong, the Philippines, Singapore, and other countries in Southeast Asia. The main draw is the complex, the seven-story pagoda, or they call it as the pagoda of 10,000 Buddhas. There is no entrance fee to this temple. We've only had to pay for parking fee as we rode the motorbike there. That's really cool, isn't it? Yeah, that's is really cool. So this is the the wishing ribbon. So as you can see on each of them, they have like different 
how can I say, witch? Yeah, in different ways. Like family to be safe, wishes come true. Um, you have to pay one Malaysian ringgit right here. So this is why you can actually buy the witching ribbon. One ringgit each and then they the just ask here. Yeah, they just ask you to put a donation here. We need this one. Smooth working conditions. <laughs> Living together harmoniously. <laughs> and booming business. While you visit Kick Look See Temple, don't forget to try making a wish like the locals here. Making a wish with a wishing ribbon is a lovely tradition which you can select what you want to accomplish and hang the ribbon on the wishing tree. Armenian Street is a narrow street within the city of Georgetown in Penang, Malaysia, located within the city's UNESCO World Heritage Site. The road has gained popularity in the recent years because of its rich cultural offerings and street art. Down. So we're actually in the art district. So like there's murals and paintings all over the wall. Like look at this storefront. Even the gates are different pieces of artwork. Wire artwork, painting artwork, sh like structure artwork is everywhere. They even have like these, uh, they're like link bikes. So like New York City and those main city hubs, like in the US I've seen bicycles. Even in Mexico they have the bicycles that you can rent in the little carts and they have them here as well so you see people actually riding bicycles around renting them you wanna go there it's called american house nah it's your house i've seen enough of america <laughs> this house is stunning no wonder why a lot of people actually on TripAdvisor read it as like a really really top place that you have to visit so many people read it as excellent five stars. You can definitely see why it's a heritage site. Like there's just so much, so much history and they have so much here, like the architecture. Peranakan is a result of intermarriage between early immigrant Chinese men with ethnic Malay women. At Peranakan Mansion, it is a museum dedicated to Penang's Peranakan heritage. The museum itself is housed within the distinctive green-hued mansion at Church Street in Georgetown, Penang. The mansion showcase is a very unique interior design and contains thousands of Peranakan artifacts, antiques, and collectibles. Take four months to finish yes, the show. Yes, four months to complete. Yeah. Now, 50,000 to 100,000 pieces. Wow. Yeah. That's a bit. See that? Yeah. Use your handphone, yeah? Oh. Oh. After visiting the Peranakan Mansion, you should not miss trying the snack from Peranakan culture. It's called Nanya, which is not only in Malaysia, but very popular in Singapore and Thailand. It's typically a bite-sized snack that consists of three main ingredients, of rice flour, white coconut milk, and pandan. Some of them even come with glutinous rice as well. It definitely looks like one of those desserts where you can't eat the whole thing because it's so yeah, yeah, unbelievably yeah, yeah. sweet. But it's really not bad. You taste a lot more sticky rice and you do like the sweet jello flavor. Yeah. But it's really good. You have to try this. Let's this is she a just really, wanted you to buy it. Really? She said it's special. Uh Yonya snack. It's good because you're special too. Oh, it's like a sticky rice Ooh. wrap. With something inside. Whoa. I've never seen anything like that. Oh, yeah. It's coconut. There's a different night market at a different location happening every day in Penang. Seven days, seven different markets. So you never get bored of exploring food and seeing locals cook in front of your eyes. For us, Monday night market at Mao Kao Lung and for Lim, Wednesday night market gave us the most local vibe. While Friday night market at Ji Lu Tong is very crowded. In order for you to find out the night markets at different days, we will list them further information in the description box below. I'm just amazed. So what Ta has been waiting for. Watch your eyes light up. You can't miss drinking coffee in Penang. It's some of the best we've ever tried. Just like Vietnamese version, they also use condensed milk in it. You can easily get coffee from Kopitam. 
You're always getting coffee. Definitely. There's one guy come and ask me, what do I want to drink? And then I was just like, coffee bang. Is it coffee bang? I think they call it coffee bang. So I was just like, iced coffee. I'm drinking iced coffee right now. It's 7 p.m. You're going to be up all night. For us, the white coffee is what you should give a try for the ultimate coffee experience. It's less dark compared to the normal coffee due to the process of roasting the beans without sugar, like the typical version of coffee. The taste becomes less robust and way smoother. White coffee pairs especially well with Kopitam's sweet snack breakfast, like Kaya Butter Toast. Penang is foodie paradise. This island has been listed multiple times as one of Asia's top 10 street food cities. Also, the charming part is that there's such a variety of cuisines from its melting pot of cultures with a lot of influence from top notch cuisines like Indian, Chinese, and Malay. Some of the famous foods in Penang are char kotiao, asam laksa, sindal, and even hokin mee. Actually, the list of food to eat in Penang is endless. If you're a first timer visiting Penang, don't forget to check out our previous video on 20 foods not to miss in 2020 in Penang. You'll explore with us and narrow down some of the Malaysian dishes you must not miss while you're here. Link to the video will be in the description box below. We were lucky when we visited Penang. It was exactly the same time that the Penang International Food Festival was held. Penang is big on food and this is an annual 16-day event offering an exciting experience to indulge in Penang's famed foods, presenting endless delectable choices. So if you're planning on a date to visit Penang, try and check out when the festival is held. Generally, it tends to happen around April. If you're interested in traveling Malaysia, make sure you check out the description box below and sign up for the full travel guide on divertliving.com. This is a full guide to not only make sure you know everything about where you're traveling, but also some of the most unique things that many travelers miss.